So in this video we're going to be exploring how to work with the Color Material and Lighting Iteration tool called Colorway Presenter, the free version of the application Colorway. So with Colorway Presenter installed, when you run it, you'll be presented with this viewport which allows you to manage the projects that you're working on. Now in order to use Colorway Presenter you first need a file that's been prepared for you by a member of your team in Colorway. Now for the purposes of this tutorial I've provided a scene for you which you can load in and play around with and you can find it in the content folder that comes with this video. So to open that file click on the open a project button and then navigate to that content folder on your system and then we need to open up the one presenter start.dci file so select it and then click open. Now I'm just going to go back and click cancel because I want to go back to this start screen. Now a useful feature of this start screen is that it creates thumbnails of any projects that you've been working on and allows you to quickly access those projects simply by double clicking on the thumbnails. So I already have my one presenter start scene in here so I'm just going to double click on it and it'll open up in Colorway Presenter. So as you can see when the project opens up that the interface is very clean and simple. The project will be displayed in the viewport and there are three icons at the bottom of the viewport. Now you can scale the image in the viewport by using your mouse scroll wheel and the image will scale from the cursor location. Alternatively you can use the minus and equals keys on the keyboard. F will fit the image to the viewport. H will fill the image in the viewport. 1 will show it at full size and 2 will show it at half size. Now for the purposes of this tutorial I'm just going to fill it in the viewport so I'm going to hit H. Now if you move your mouse over the image you can see that areas of it pre-highlight. Now these are the parts of the image that presenter is asking you to make decisions about. Now if you don't want to see this overlay you can toggle it on and off by hitting the O key and with the overlay turned off you can still see the defined parts by clicking on the middle icon at the bottom of the UI. Now, When you do this brings up a list of thumbnails on the left hand side of the UI and the thumbnails will show you the areas that each part affects highlighted in red. So what happens when you select a part? Well first of all you can select parts in two ways. You can either select a part by clicking on the thumbnail in the list and when you do, a HUD or head up display will appear in the viewport containing a number of coloured spheres. Now you can deselect a part by clicking anywhere in the viewport away from the HUD with the left mouse button. So when I click that, you can see the spheres disappear. Now, alternatively, if you don't want to see this list of thumbnails on the left, you can hide it. But you can still select the parts by clicking directly on the image. So if I want to adjust the side of this coffee maker, I can just click on it with my left mouse button. And when I do, the head up display appears in the viewport. Now, obviously, working this way means it's difficult to see where the parts are. So that's why you're able to toggle the overlay display on and off with the O key. So I'm just going to click that back on and now you can see the overlay switched on. Now which way you want to work or how you want to work is completely up to you. But for the purposes of this tutorial I'm just going to keep that overlay on. Now the head-up display that appears when you click on a part contains a defined number of colour and or material choices for that particular part. So if you click on some of the other parts you can see that there are different material choices available to you. So let's supply a material to a particular part. So I'm going to click on the side of the coffee maker and I'm going to select this white sphere with the green design on it. So if I click on that sphere, you can see the material is applied to the part and the sphere has become slightly bigger than all the other spheres to indicate that that's the one that's active at the moment. So let's finish the look for this coffee maker. So if I select this section, that section could be black, could be white. Actually, I think green will look nicer. Click on that section. I think that one, want that to be green. This area, that could definitely be black, but I think it might look nicer white. The button at the top, I'll make that green. And also these objects at the front, I'll make those green as well. So you can see how quickly you can move through different color variations. Now you're also able to make lighting changes. Now this can be done for design reasons or simply to make the image more compelling. So to change the lighting, first of all, you have to click on the light bulb icon at the bottom of the UI and a list of lights will become available on the right hand side of the UI. 
Now for this scene there are only two lights that can be adjusted. Now if you select a light, so I'll just select this point back. If you select a light you can turn that light off by clicking on the M icon. And you can see the image change in the viewport. And you can also isolate that particular light just so to see just what that light is affecting by clicking the S icon. So I'll just turn that off so we can see the whole image. Now you can also adjust the intensity of any light. So if I select this light and drag the slider, you can see I can make the, the background a little bit brighter there. And you can also adjust the color of any light with this color wheel. So the area in the middle of the color wheel will adjust the hue and saturation. So I want to make that a bit lighter, a bit more desaturated and a bit more green. And the area around the color wheel will adjust the lightness. So I'm just going to make that a little bit darker. Select the other light and make that more green but a lot darker. There we go. So if you're happy with the material, colour and light combination that you've created, you can then save it as a look. Now in order to see your looks, you first of all have to open up the Looks panel. And you do that by clicking on the icon with four circles at the bottom of the UI. And when you do that, a list will appear on the left hand side. And it'll contain the original look of the image when we first loaded it. So a look is a snapshot of the image at any particular time. And to save it, you click on the plus icon, the bottom left hand side of the looks list. So if I click that, the current look will be saved and we'll get a new thumbnail. So when you've created a look, you can rename it by clicking on the name and typing it in. So I'll just call this green white and hit return. So with that look created, we can now create lots of other looks. Now there's a couple of ways you can do this. If you want to create a look which is completely different from this one, then you can just double click on the original look and that will load that into the viewport port, and you can use that as a starting point. Or alternatively, if your look is similar to the one you've just created, you can select it, come down to the bottom of the list and click the folder icon and that will duplicate that look. Then you can double click on that one to load it into the viewport. And then the only change I want to make on this one is to select this material and make that white. Now what I want to do is push that change back into this look and I can do that by clicking on the equals icon in the bottom right hand corner of the list. And you can see the thumbnail change. So go ahead and create a number of different looks for this coffee maker. I'm going to create one that's completely different, so I'll just double click on the original and I'll start playing around with these colours. So when you finish creating your looks, you can cycle through them quickly by using the left and right arrow buttons on the keyboard. So I've got a green with a green white front, I've got a yellow and a carbon fibre one, the, I'm also one with a yellow front, green and yellow one, yellow and blue, blue and orange, and then this horrible one. Now if you've created something that you then decide you don't want, then you can easily delete a look by selecting the look and clicking on the minus button in the looks list, and that'll remove it. Now as you create more and more looks, eventually there'll be too many to actually fit in the viewport. But you can easily scroll through the list by using your scroll wheel on your mouse to move through it. Or you can grab the bar at the side of the viewport to scroll it. And if you want a clearer view of the actual look, you can grab this bar at the side and scale the thumbnails up. So when you finish creating your looks, you then need to send them back to the person who sent you the original colorway file or alternatively the person who's then going to pick up the project from that point. So to do that you need to go to the file menu and use the export to colorway command or alternatively you can use shift command E on a Mac or shift control E on Windows and then save the file. So I'll give it a name, it's going to save it as an LXP file and just hit save. 
and the file that's created is actually quite small so it can easily be emailed. And that's all there is to it. The simplicity of Colorway Presenter is what makes it so powerful. It helps you to make key design decisions at an incredible speed that you can then easily feed back to your team. It's intelligently designed, easily discoverable, and the perfect tool for helping you to make the right creative choices.